27th of February 2022. Andy Lee, this beautiful smiling face. That's Andy, he's our friend. Can you change this episode to like a person of vague interest? From news.com.au. News.com.au. I'm Andrew Buckalo, and I've got news for you. Well, I've got a little bit of a treat for you today. It's a person of interest episode on I've Got News For You and my guest is someone that I've idolised for years. Now, fun fact about me, I love commercial radio, right? I just love it. And like so many Aussies, I was obsessed with Hamish and Andy. Now, I've got to know them both a little bit over the years, but today I'm going to ask Andy Lee all the questions I've ever wanted to ask him. Will he and Hamish ever return to radio? What did Jerry Seinfeld say to him during an interview that upset him? And what really happened when Kevin Rudd came onto their show just a day before he lost the federal election? Well, Andy Lee is going to answer all those questions and more in just a moment. Andy Lee, thank you so much for coming on I've Got News For You. Pleasure, mate. It's an honour, actually. (laughs) Well, first question, you are killing it on TV. You're killing it in the podcasting world. But as you know, I'm a bit of a radio nerd. I want to know, will Hamish and Andy ever return to the airwaves for a full-time radio show? Oh, look, I hope so. I mean, that, that, that's going to be my answer. I hope so. But I, maybe it's going to be, you know, when we're angry about land tax and, <laughs> uh, and we're both 70 and we can have callers coming in saying, you know, the easement on their house uh, has been reclaimed by the council and we can <laughs> complain about it. <laughs> Something like that, I think, where we might land. Is there kind of like an open agreement with Southern Cross or Stereo, the company you're aligned with, that if you ever are keen, that there's always a slot for you? They, that's a good point. I should double check on that. I mean, I reckon it will change uh, as the time goes by, but I should secure something for at least 50 years. But <laughs> I, my guess is between Hamish and I, we've got a career-ending scandal happening in the next eight years. It's been too good for too long. <laughs> Uh, Kyle Sanderlands made headlines last week when he had a spat with Jackie O and stormed out of the studio. Let's have a listen to that now. Even if it is true, it doesn't mean Gladys thinks he's horrible. Well, he could be a that. horrible person. No, I you said, didn't. I said it. I said that I'm she might have... Do the show by yourself. What a show it'll be. We want you, Kyle. Okay, I think we'll take a short break because I'm not even sure what happened. Did something happen before I came here? Was it all good? Ah, typical Kyle there. Now, you and Hamish were on air together for years. You must have had a tiff at some stage during your radio days. Do you remember what one was about? Um, we had <laughs> we did was one on air. It's not to the level of Kyle. Um, I think he's that. It's one of his. His main weapons, actually. <laughs> it's that from Kyle is, is, is while we tune in. But uh, I, Hamish hates spiders, and I found a huntsman on the way back from the toilet in the song and picked it up. And then just before the song finished and we were going into the talk break, Hamish said, where are up to? And I pointed at the run sheet and threw the huntsman on it. <laughs> and he lost his marbles, and, and, <laughs> and it was a dead huntsman. And said, what are you doing? And I said, just relax, it did. And he said, what if I threw something you hate on you? And I said, like what? He said, like your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and it immediately became a PA system from me to my ex-girlfriend because I didn't hate her. But I was like, if you're listening, I've never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wild. Um, All right, I've got a couple of random true or false questions for you here. Yep. Is it true that you have a lot of money in Bitcoin, but you don't remember the password to access that Bitcoin? Uh, Well, I guess we we don't have a lot of money as in a lot of Bitcoins. But yes, we do have two and a half Bitcoins that we've lost the password to. Um, I don't know what today's price is of Bitcoin, um, but yeah, that would equal a lot of money in the AUD. <laughs> Who are you blaming for that? Who lost it? Uh, it's, the, it's a joint loss. Um, uh, Jeremy, our web guy, he uh, lost two of them. We tried to get him hypnotised to get the password back out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, it didn't work. But uh, And then the second one, uh, Jack, uh, Cackling Jack, he lost the password of my personal one. Um, so, yes, I think it's about $120,000 of Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, another true or false question, a bit of a curly mm. one, this one. You didn't necessarily enjoy your interview with Jerry Seinfeld. Is that right? No, but I, I listened back to it, and I think maybe we were just young and nervous 
and wanted to really make an impression on one of the greatest comedians in the world. It didn't quite go to plan. What happened there? Can you tell me the story? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it's funny. It's like, you know, I, 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 there was one particular moment when in my first question for B movie, I said, why bees? You know, why not wasps? Why not beetles? And he said, that's the worst question. I've ever been asked. <laughs> so I think starting the interview with something like that, uh, I didn't think was that fair because I thought it was a good, good enough question for him to be able to, um, to, uh, to talk about his film. Um, uh, but then with my second question, he said, that's a good question. And I said, well, have an eye bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember rushing home from work to listen to that interview with Jerry Seinfeld that you did. And yeah, that question that you asked him, I believe was, have you ever created a character for your kids? And he said, that's such a good question. No one's ever asked me that. And he told you an amazing story. And I will never forget that moment. So at least I bounced back. I did forget what the question I asked. I think I was just... I think I forgot it like two seconds after I said it because he said that's a good question. I was like, phew. If I'd followed up with another stink, it would be in trouble. <laughs> another true or false question. Back in 2019, were you asked if you were interested in trying out to be one of the co-hosts on the Today Show on Channel 9? Oh, uh, I think that there's been a chat about that before, whether I'd be interested in, um, in, in looking at that. But, yeah, the fact that um, getting up that early... <laughs> I mean, it's the same reason um, that uh, Hamish and I wouldn't do breakfast radio. <laughs> the idea of getting up early uh, didn't float my boat. But that kind of stuff happens all the time with, uh, with different shows across all networks. People sound you out to see whether you might be interested. The second season of Andy's show on Channel 9, which is called The 100 with Andy Lee, kicks off tomorrow night after Married at First Sight. If you haven't seen it before, here's the deal. Essentially, it's a quiz for three panellist comedians, and their job is to try and guess what Australia thinks and feels about a range of topics. And then there's 100 people live from their homes representing cross-section of Australia that um, we can poll live and then get the stories behind the stat. How many of you have had a crush on a friend but never told them. All right. How many of you have done this? Oh. 47%. That's crazy. That is. Is, is anyone willing to talk about it? Uh, Lucy. So, I had a crush on a friend back in primary school. Andy, tell me, what stat on the show has surprised you the most? Oh, good question. I think... Um, one that came up um, during our research is 4% of Australians have called off a wedding. Oh, right. Which, not like postponed it because of COVID, like actually called it off a wedding, which is quite a lot, I thought, <laughs> to, to be honest. The one thing I do love as well is, and see if you can get it, Bucky, mm. um, what percentage of Australians say I love you in the first week of meeting someone. Oh, my God, psychos. So I'm going to say, like, 3%. 10%. Who's doing that? I don't get that. (laughs) Wouldn't you just run away if someone said that to you in the first week? Yeah, exactly. So it was fascinating talking to people that do that. People that haven't lived together before being married, I thought was also a a crazy thing to try and do. (laughs) And also people will find out, uh, how many of Australians regularly check their partner's phone without them knowing? Have you ever done that? No, I've been tempted to, really tempted to. And the main the main reason, um, and I've thought about when Beck in the shower, is I'm just desperate to know her screen time. I want to know how long <laughs> she spends on social media because she never tells me. So, yeah, m- maybe I will one day. But, you know, uh, as Mike Goldstein said to me, it, it's sometimes a giveaway when you're holding up to their face while they're in the shower <laughs> to... <laughs> To get to uh, on tomorrow night's episode, Sophie Monk and Tommy Little are on, uh, and I hear there's a federal politician as well. Yep, um, Tommy Little uh, and Sophie are just both tremendous. Uh, Sophie, in her usual Sophie way, doesn't quite know when she's being funny, <laughs> <laughs> but reveals a few things. The, f- the fact that she blames her own farts on the dogs is something I didn't expect <laughs> Sophie Monk to tell us. <laughs> Um, and uh, and Tommy Little, um, who did say he still was so confident with a question that he said he'd give the audience 50 bucks if he got it wrong, and he got it wrong. So <laughs> I think the audience were happy. Um, they got 50 bucks each. Um, and then the politician, I mean, this is one of our segments that we love. It's called Face the 100, and some people have 
the climb to do it along the ride. I won't say who, maybe I will at some point to you, Bucky, but um, some people are confident that they can go and find out how many Australians apps know them mm-hmm. uh, and others don't really want to know how, uh, how recognisable they are or not. But uh, Senator Jackie Lambie is facing the hundreds. We'll find out how many Australians know who she is. Given how big the radio show was back in the day, I'm assuming that you had politicians just clamouring to get on air with you guys. Is that right? Yeah, it was a strange old time when you look back at it. Like, you know, the radio show at the time didn't feel that big for Hayman and I because it was all we knew. But when you look back at it now, you go, okay, yeah, that, that really was soaring. Um, but, yeah, before any election, uh, the, the, um, the different politicians and leaders would want to come on and, uh, and, and often after uh, they've won an election, um, try and connect with the people. But I do remember when Kevin Rudd had his second crack at it, um, after he'd been knifed and then he did the re-knifing and came back. Uh, we were doing a, a more of a podcast and, and an afternoon kind of show and he came on the day before the election and we said he could only come on if he mixed up a unique food and he was standing there with his shoes off mixing ice cream and popcorn the day before he lost an election and I wonder whether he reflects on that and goes, was this really the best use of my time? <laughs> <laughs> it is a great sport. Um, you mentioned your partner, Beck, earlier. Mm. You guys have been together for seven years. Are you just sick of people asking when you're going to get down on one knee and pop the question? <laughs> yeah, oh, look, I don't know why Beck hasn't yet. <laughs> it, uh, you know, but I'm waiting. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully this year. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if the time comes that you decide to propose, yep. are you someone who would do something elaborate, fireworks or something like that, or are you kind of a, you know, just the two of you on a beach kind of guy? I said I'd only propose if Beyonce was there to <laughs> sing a bespoke song for Beck about the proposal, and so that's why I'm just still working through Beyonce's availability at the moment. So um, <laughs> that's the only uh, holdback, I think. Now, in every Person of Interest episode on I've Got News For You, we ask our guests the same final five questions. Andy Lee, the first one... Can you change this episode to, like, Person of Vague Interest? I just don't (laughs) want to come across as that. You're selling yourself short there, Andy. You're one of Australia's (laughs) biggest stars. You've got your own TV show. Now, the first question for you, what's something not many people know about you? Ooh, I play the didgeridoo. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Who taught you that? Um... A couple of people, actually. Uh, there was, a, there was this, this guy out um, uh, in kind of regional Victoria who used to go up to the, the Northern Territory uh, kind of three months a year and and, uh, and find the right wood for it, and he was the one that kind of started on it. Um, but, yeah, it was it was just for, a, for back in the day when he used to play the band, we used to have some roots type uh, songs. I thought, oh, it'd be cool if you had to play the didge. Uh, and it took a while to get the circular breathing going. You can't do it on a breathalyzer, uh, <laughs> even if you try <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, it was the love of the music. It wasn't a, a want to get out. <laughs> it's a want to drink dry, but it carried me to learn the circular breeze. Next question. What profession other than your own would you like to have attempted? Uh, look, I, I wanted to be an accountant back oh, in the day. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm quite good at balancing a ledger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you someone who kind of gets off on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love a spreadsheet. I love things. Um, I mean, last uh, last lockdown for Victoria, I um, in the first wave, I built my own mapping to try and predict uh, what days we might come out and what days that uh, that uh, we might hit certain thresholds. And I and like months out, I'd got it. It was crazy. I got the exact day, like three and a half months out, which was well, that's crazy. had me rejoicing. Yeah. Um, if you're a bit of a nerd, do you love Wordle then? I have not succumbed to Wordle yet, only because I have enough time wasting things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Who is someone that you would love to meet and why? There's a bunch. I mean, obviously, a bunch of people. From a golfing standpoint, Tiger Woods is one that I've never met. and I've met a lot of golf stars, but he's the best uh, player there, there ever was. And, um, and you know, I'm obsessed with golf, so an opportunity to, to go around and, and uh, see how he plays and learn from him would be amazing. Favourite film of all time, Andy? What is it? Braveheart. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I know it's a little bit like AFL NRL answer, <laughs> that of the Shawshank Redemption, but I just loved it and uh, I watch it every year with someone who hasn't watched it. And do you judge them on their responses to the film? Uh, 
No, like it is, I mean, it's just a beautifully made film. I know Mel Gibson's really kind of gone off the ball since. It's <laughs> disappointing for me, but yeah, it's um, the the Highlands. I love Scotland. It's um, yeah, and I think it's it's a great mix of action, gore, and also a love story. Final question, Andy Lee. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Um, don't give advice to someone who's not in a position to be able to take it, whether that's physically or mentally. Physically, if you're giving advice to someone who can't hear you, that's bad. <laughs> but also, <laughs> if someone is uh, too emotional or can't see it right yet, hold off. Mm, that's a good tip. Uh, Andy Lee, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to I've Got News For You and can't wait to see you back on Channel 9 with The 100 with Andy Lee. Thanks, mate. It's been, you and I have known each other for a very, very long time, so I'm pleased that uh, we still get to do this together. Ah, oh, Andy Lee. He's dead set, one of the nicest guys that you will ever meet. So make sure you check out his show tomorrow night at 9pm on 9. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I'll catch you next time.